Good morning and a very warm and special welcome to each of you on this glorious Lord's Day as we once again come together to worship the Lord, to worship Him and to praise His mighty name because of course the Lord is the one who is worthy of all honor, all praise and all glory. And as always it is such a a privilege to share together in the word of the Lord and to simply be together, together even though it is only virtually at this point in time with fellow believers throughout the entire world and to praise the name of the Lord. And with that our call to worship this morning is taken from 1 Chronicles chapter 29 from verse 10 to verse 13. And this is a prayer of David, and it is one that we echo this morning as our prayer to the Lord. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, O Lord, God of our Father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power, and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give thanks to you and praise your glorious name. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we come before you this morning giving you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. We worship you this day, Lord, because you are our mighty God. You are the one who is sovereign over all things. You are the creator of life. You are the one who breathes your very breath into our, our life. And it is by your spirit, Lord, that you lead and guide each one of us. By your spirit, you comfort us, you uplift us, you encourage us, and you teach us your ways. By your spirit, Lord, we come before you this morning. By your spirit, we give thanks to you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that on this day, as we gather together, not just as individual people within our homes, but as fellow believers in Christ Jesus, spread throughout the entire world, we are assured that we are one body and that we all have one purpose. And that is to glorify you. And that is what we do this morning. Heavenly Father, we pray now for your blessing upon this time. And we ask, Lord, that you would move among us. That you would touch us afresh this day. And that when we, we are through with this message, when we are, are done and we get back to our normal lives, as we get back to our everyday things, that we would not forget you, but that we would glorify you in all things. And we pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Philippians. And it is going to be a two-part um, two sermon. And I only discovered that um, 
during sort of the writing stage of this, but bear with me. Uh, we're going to look at, at Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to verse 16 this week, and then next week uh, we will look at the rest of chapter 3. But it is such a, a beautiful passage from the book of Philippians, and I think it is so vital that that we understand what is, is going on in this passage and how it relates to us in these strange and, and difficult times. And so we read from verse 12. Not that I have already attained all this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which Christ, or rather, sorry, for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Now, what Paul is, is speaking about in the opening verses of this passage is not simply a human achievement. I know we speak about this quite often, um, and I'm sure we're all familiar with the fact that Paul never really does anything to, to boast, um, to, to puff himself up almost. Um, Paul never reaches for these, these personal goals. And when he speaks about this, this obtaining all things or being made perfect, this is not a reference to his own successes in planting and leading multiple churches throughout the, the ancient world. It is not a vision of his own future in striving to become the best or to be the most authoritative figure within the Christian church. Understanding that it was Christ Jesus who took hold of him. And that is, is most certainly a reference to Paul's own conversion when he met the risen Christ on the road to Damascus. Paul makes it clear that the goal he has is the same goal of Christ. Furthermore, it is not in his own strength that he is able to obtain such things. It is not in his own strength that he is able to reach for this common goal that Christ has set before him. But it is Christ alone who supplies what is needed. And it is Christ alone who sustains him as he presses on towards that goal. Now, does this not sound like the greatest plan for our lives as Christians? I know it is, is sometimes something that we, we consider. It is something that we are knowledgeable about. You know, these teachings about doing things in the strength of Christ and knowing that it is him who sustains us through all things. 
having all of that is a massive comfort to us. And yet when it comes to reaching for that goal, the common goal between us as believers in Christ and the goal that Christ has set for each one of us, we sometimes try and try and try to reach that goal in and of our own strength. But Paul makes it clear that this is not how we should do things. And I believe that there is something far greater that continually holds us back from realizing this goal. See, when I, I read this passage, it brings up something within me that I believe many of us have and probably still struggle with today. And it comes from Paul's words in verses 13 and 14. He says, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Now we as people um, so often speak about sin. And we have such a clear understanding of what sin is as well as a clear understanding of the many sins that we have committed. We have a clear understanding even of what the consequences of our sins are. But we also have a clear understanding about forgiveness. With joy in our hearts, we praise the Lord for that forgiveness, and it is such a beautiful moment for us in our lives, in our personal journeys with the risen Christ. And if we take Paul as the example, what we see is when, or rather before his um, conversion on the road to Damascus, Paul was an enemy of Christ. Paul was the one who persecuted the church. Paul was the one who gave the orders to, to stone and kill Christians simply for their faith. And yet, after that moment of conversion, Paul becomes a pillar of strength for the church. Paul becomes a profound leader within the church, a, a teacher of the gospel of Christ, the very thing that he persecuted Christians for. But I want to bring this back to ourselves when it comes to, to the sins of our past, when it comes to, to the way in which we we lived our lives before encountering Christ. How often do we, we carry the sins of our past with us? How often do we carry the, the burden of, of what we have done with us? How often do we allow these things to burden us, to weigh heavy upon our shoulders? Even with that understanding of forgiveness, we still do this. Now, I want to ask, is Paul saying to us that we should simply forget about these, these things? Should we simply forget about what we have done? Should we forget about the, the lives we lived before encountering Christ? And I want to say definitely not. 
We do not simply forget. As, as human beings, we do not simply lose all memory of, of our sinful past. Instead, I believe what Paul is saying is that we have to acknowledge that it exists. It was once part of who we were as people. We have to acknowledge that it is right where it should be. In the past. And by all accounts, that is where we should leave it. That is, in essence, what Paul says when, he, when, when we read from his own mouth, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. It is not to lose all memory of what has happened, but it is to acknowledge that it is there, but that is where we should leave it. See, we as Christians are all striving towards what lies ahead of us, towards the goal of Christ Jesus that we may win this prize, which is heavenwards. But in our own straining towards it, we carry so much with us that it feels like we can hardly take the next step. Picture it like this, to, to try and, and be somewhat more practical about this lesson. Imagine that we are all walking in the same place, all walking in the same direction through this place. And for argument's sake, let's call it life. And on the backs of every single person is a burlap sack filled with so many different things that we carry with us. Things that we have collected almost over the past years. And some of those things for us are, are light. Almost air-like in, in their weight. And then some of those things are excruciatingly heavy, so much so that they cause us physical pain. It is a pain in the shoulders. It is a pain in the arms. It is a pain on our lower backs as those heavy things dig deeper and deeper into our flesh. And of course, there are multiple solutions to, to dealing with this problem. Um, we can always um, take a break, you know, kind of sit down where we are to, to regain strength. And so we, we put this, this, sack that is weighing heavy upon us on the ground. We rebuild our strength. But eventually, at some point, we have to get up again. We have to keep moving forward. And so we struggle to lift up the things that we are carrying, only to, to face that burden, to face those, those pains all over again as we struggle to reach our final destination. Of course, um, another alternative is to try and alleviate this pain. And so what we can do is try and cushion the back. You know, when, when you are carrying something extremely heavy, we try and put, I don't know, maybe a, 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 a cloth or, or some sort of padding between our flesh and 
this burlap sack. But eventually, as we know, that that will wear out over time. And even if it doesn't, if we've somehow created this, this impenetrable, unwearable kind of, of cushioning, the weight never ceases. There is still that constant weight upon our shoulders. There is still that constant weight upon our arms. The, the strain that it causes on the back. And it is only with a slightly more bearable discomfort on the back. Another alternative, and this is the one I think we're most familiar with, is that we decide to empty out all those things that are weighing us down. So we throw them out. We, we leave them wherever they may be. And we walk feeling so much lighter. Let's say for about another 500 meters or so, and there's this greatest sense of relief. And yet, once we reach the 500 meter mark, all of a sudden there's doubt. All of a sudden, we turn around and we go and collect those things again. We go and pick them up and we carry that weight upon our shoulders as we struggle once again. We so often dwell on those things that are in the past. And for many of us, we carry them around with us throughout our lives. And yes, there's times where, where we pray earnestly about sin, about the things that we have done, about the burdens that we carry. We come before the, the throne of God and we, we lay these things down at His feet. And we pray, asking the Lord that we would, would finally find a sense of peace and relief from the weight that we have been carrying. And at the end of, of our prayers, we pick those things back up. And we continue to carry them with us. I find myself being guilty of this many, many times. And I believe that this is the example of Paul that is brought before us this morning. God has given to us every good thing in life. And he has set before us this race that we call life. See, in the ancient Greek world, races would be held frequently. And the winner would receive this, this most beautifully woven wreath of leaves. And at times there would even be a cash awarded to the winner. And I'm sure most of the time what really keeps a, a runner going is this idea of praise from the mouths of, of their adoring fans. But our race is, is not run for worldly possessions, nor is it run for worldly praise. 
What God says to us is that our prize is far greater and it resides in heaven. And that prize is an everlasting glory. Friends, I want to remind you this morning that God has blessed us with countless gifts along this journey. The gift of forgiveness. The gift of mercy. The gift of grace. The gift of his love for us. The gift of salvation. These things that we carry with us do not weigh heavy upon us. And I want to ask you this morning, I, I, I don't know what the things are that you are carrying with you this morning. I do not know what, what the things you have laid down at one stage are only to, to be picking them back up again. I do not know what those things are. But I ask you this morning and I plead with you to come before the Lord and to lay them down at his feet and to leave them there. This morning I want to remind you that there is, is no need to, to carry those burdens with you anymore. You do not have to carry guilt or shame. You do not have to run this race of life feeling tired and weary. Christ says to us in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 to 30. He says to, to all of us, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The forgiveness that we have marveled at is real it is tangible and it is freely given to you and to me at the cross of christ lay down the burdens you have been carrying and take hold of that forgiveness with both hands this morning Claim that promise that God has given you, for it is yours. And as Paul says at the end of verse 16, let us live up to what we have already attained. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God. We thank you, Lord, for your word to us this morning. For the reminder that at the cross of Christ Jesus, your one and only Son, who laid down his life for each one of us, it is at that cross that we receive forgiveness, that we receive mercy, that we receive grace, that we receive salvation. It is at that point where we truly see your love for each one of us displayed.
So often, Lord, we are reminded of your love and your grace and your mercy and of salvation and forgiveness. And yet, Lord, there are more times in our lives where we try and carry the burdens that we have upon ourselves. And it is in those times where we truly feel weak, where we truly feel pain and hurt, at those times where we truly feel the burden of life pressing upon us. Lord, we pray. We pray with the deepest cry of our hearts that you would enable us to lay them down, to come before you and to claim the promises of your word, the promise of forgiveness, the promise that Christ has has given unto us a light yoke. Enable us, Lord, to realize those things fully. And give us a profound sense of peace that comes from you and you alone. And we pray these things now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to ask you this morning if there are, are, are things that you or your loved ones are going through. If there are things that you are struggling with, please contact someone. Contact us at at Trinity Church in Pretoria. Leave a comment um, on Facebook or on YouTube or wherever it might be. Send us an email. We will be more than happy to, to help where we can and we will pray with you through these tough times. And remember, dear friends, that you are not alone in these things. And now receive the Lord's blessing. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you and those whom you love today and always. Amen. Before the throne of God above I have a strong and perfect plea A great high priest whose name is love